Question 11. The speeds of a vehicle are shown below in the cumulative frequency histogram and you can see the chart that's provided below. What's the frequency of the group with a class center of 75 kilometers per hour? So let's have a look at what's going on here. All across the horizontal axis, so that's uh, this axis here, we have the vehicle speed in kilometers per hour and the one that we're interested in right now is that one that says 75, this guy here. So we wanna know what's the frequency of this particular group. Now, if I go up and read up, like where does that bar hit? Well, up here, that's where the top of that is. And I can draw a line horizontally over to the left here. And you can see there, I'm looking, and that seems like it strikes between 200 and 250. Um, again, there's the four markings, so they're going up in 10. So 210, 220, 230, 240. So the one I'm interested in is 220. Now 220 is not the frequency of that class, it's the cumulative frequency. So that includes all of the previous classes. In order to work out the frequency of this class alone, I have to subtract all of the previous classes. And the way I do that is by looking at this previous step in the cumulative frequency graph. When I have a look at this bar here, this bar here represents not just the vehicle speeds of 70 kilometers, but 70 kilometers and 65 and 60 and also 55. So if I go over to the left again, let's see that marks hits the spot. So that looks like 130 if I'm reading that correctly. So from there, I can say, okay, just that one group is that distance there. Let's actually move that a bit over so you can see it more clearly. It's that distance from the 220 to the 130. So my working out will be 220, take away 130. And um, hopefully our mental arithmetic is good enough to know that that's 90. All right. Now, next step, construct a cumulative frequency polygon or an ogive on the above graph. Now, I'm gonna get rid of all of this working here so that you can see the ogive I'm about to draw as clearly as possible. I'm gonna use a nice thick black here so that you can see it. Now, a cumulative frequency polygon is going to join um, the bottom left corner to the top right corner um, in a continuous line from the bottom of the chart all the way to the top. So I'm gonna start right down here you got to zoom in pretty close. At the bottom of the graph, bottom left, to the top right. There we go. And obviously you would use a ruler to do this and you want to indicate it um, you know, very darkly on your exam paper. And then I continue this pattern going from the bottom left to the top right. There's the bottom left there and I'm going to go up to the top right. And I continue this for the entire graph. So I'm going to go up here, next one up. And I'm going to end up you can see it leveling out here at the top right hand corner. So that's the ogive, that is the cumulative frequency polygon. And now I'm gonna use that, so it's important that you get this right because you're going to get a result from it in the next part. I'm gonna use that graph to estimate the median speed. Now, um, we really need to pause for a moment because there was a uh, common mistake here that I need to highlight. So what does median mean? It's the middle of the data set, so if you had uh, 101 people, it would be the 51st person is right there down in the middle. How do I get the median from this? Well, I need to know what's the total number of people. Is it 101? Is it 301? And then I need to find who's the middle of that. Now the trap here for young players is that the top of the vertical axis here, you can see goes up to 350. But there are not 350 data points in here because you can see over here in the top right hand corner, the cumulative frequency histogram never reaches 350, it actually stops short at 300. That's the actual total frequency. So therefore I have to go from 300, divide that by two to get my median. Um, it's actually n plus one on two if you need to be precise, but because we've got such a large number here, the precision between you know, one spot or half a spot forward isn't gonna make a big difference here. Um, 300 roughly divided by two gives me 150, not 175, which is what you would have got if you took 350 as the, uh, the total frequency there. So to do this correctly, uh, I'm gonna go from there's 150, that's my median position there, and I'm going to draw that across until I meet the ogive, the cumulative frequency polygon. So I'm gonna draw that all the way here. There we go. And then I'm going to mark that down to here. 
All right, now I've used the left hand, the vertical axis to find the median. It's at 150 out of 300. I've drawn my line all the way across so that it meets the ogive. So when it heads across here with a ruler, it's critical that that line is straight. It meets somewhere and then it's gonna have a corresponding speed. And this is actually the number that I'm interested in. You can see it says, use your graph to estimate the median speed. Uh, and it's important that it says the median speed and not the median uh, class because I need to actually be quite precise here. Um, my ogive needs to uh, be accurate, otherwise I'm not going to match to this exact spot. Now you can see here, if you read carefully, this is 70 and this is 75. So that would mean that in here, uh, that would be something like 72 point five and so if I have a look there depending on where exactly and how thick your line is gone um, that's going to be either 73 or 74 I think it's a bit closer to 73 just barely but either of those would be fine so I'm going to write down approximately 73 and don't forget they have asked for a speed so if I have a look at the graph it says this is in kilometers per hour not miles or meters per second or things like that all right so that was using the ogive let's move on to question 12 the mean weight of 14 u12 students is 78.9 kilograms when a 15th person is included the mean increases by 1.03 kilograms What's the weight of the 15th person? All right, now before we tackle this question and start to put some calculations in here, the first thing we've got to do is remember what, what are we actually calculating and how do we use that to form a strategy to work out what the answer is? Well, this is a question all about means. Uh, we usually indicate the mean or write the mean as X bar. And the mean is equal to the total, uh, you know, in this case, weight, or maybe it was the number of, um, you know, points that were scored in a game or the number of marks you got in an exam, whatever that total happens to be, in this case the total number of kilograms, and you're going to divide by the number of people, games of basketball, exams that you took, um, the total number of people who were included in this. So if we want to work out a mean, you need the total and the number of people who are included in this case. So if you want to work out one of these, you need the other two. Now you can see, for example, you start off being provided with two of those figures for the original group. You've got 14, that will be the N in that original group. And then you've got the 78.9, which is the X bar, that's the mean for that original group. And then you get given, well, kind of inferred new information uh, from here. Uh, this increase of 1.03 kilograms relates to the mean. So if you think 78.9 plus 1.03, that's going to give me, uh, let's quickly think about that, that's 79.93 kilograms. That's going to be the new mean of my other group, and I've got, again, another N here for the different group. So how do I piece all these things together in order to work out the solution? Well, I'm going to say if I have the mean weight of the original group, um, I can say that the uh, total weight, which is the missing number, the third number which wasn't given to me before, the total weight of the original group of 14 is equal to uh, let's see here. Well, it's going to be the 14 people multiplied by their means, 78.9 kilograms. Now, before I go ahead and evaluate this, I just want to make a quick note about the working out that we saw in this question. It's really common for students to just jump straight to writing 14 times 78.9. Uh, I totally get that. You're in a hurry. You don't have a lot of time to finish this exam. So you're under time pressure and you already know what you're trying to do. The problem is if your solution is just kind of a mess of this times that, that divided by that, this plus that, and then there's no actual description like total weight of 14 people, what are you actually calculating? Uh, it rapidly becomes unclear what it is that your answer is supposed to be. So your solution is not well structured. So that's why I'm going to take the time to write down total weight of 14. It actually indicates what my calculations mean. And then I'm going to reach my calculator. Um, it's going to tell me that it's 1,104.6 1 kilograms. So that's the total weight of the original group. Now, when you then go to work out the total weight of the new group, that total weight of 15, the difference 
between the group of 14 and the group of 15 is that 15th person. So once I have these two totals, all I need to do is subtract one figure from the other. That'll give me the weight of the 15th person. So let's go ahead and work that out. There's going to be 15 people and their mean weight, remember it increased by 1.03 kilograms, is going to be 79.93 kilograms. And again, we'll just reach for our calculator there, and punch in that set of numbers. And that gives us 1,198.95 kilograms. So the difference between this figure here and this figure here, that's gonna be my 15th person. So that's what I'm gonna write, 15th person. They're going to be, or their weight's going to be, the second number, the larger one, take away the original number, the smaller one, and again, if we punch this into our calculator, you can see we're gonna get 94.35 kilograms. That's the weight of the 15th person, and that's how we calculated it.